On the time is 631. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Vice President Ferguson, could you do the invocation, please? Yes, good evening, everyone. Father God, we just give you the glory and the honor. We just bless you for your goodness and your mercy, for your grace. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you be in our midst, Father God, that, that you would grace us with your understanding, your guidance, your love, and your wisdom as we continue to do the, the business of the city, as we go through the budget to finalize it. Father God, we ask that you would bless everyone that is in attendance, their families, and all who's associated with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Council Clerk, could you do the roll call, please? Councilwoman Fareed. Councilwoman Fareed, we didn't hear you. Councilwoman Guillaume. Present. Councilman Hairston. Here. Councilman Herring. Here. Councilwoman Jones. Here. Council Vice President Ferguson. Here. And Council President Curtis. Here. All are accounted for. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to uh, adopt the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Councilman Harry? Um, yeah, I'm looking over the agenda, and it says we're going over the opera funds. And I'm looking at the spreadsheet for the opera funds that I have. It was in my box. And then I'm looking at the one that you sent, and they're completely different. Um, so I guess my question is, which, I mean, I've seen four so far, so which one are we using? The one that um, you sent it was in my box, the one that I know Councilwoman Fareed had some questions on her spreadsheet, and then the treasurer sent another spreadsheet all together. And I'm just trying yeah. to figure out which one, which one, do, which one do the citizens actually have? Well, the citizens only have what's in the budget. Um, so they don't have the spreadsheet that I shared with the council today, which is, um, a summary, but we can get to that during the discussion. Yeah, that's that. I mean, the, the answer to the question is when decide whether I vote on the agenda. Um, but I think you know, definitely the citizens need to have, some, have this information as well as we be sure what we're working. I'm mean, just like there's so many pieces moving around here. So, all right, that's my that's the only thing I had. Okay. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Yes, I'd like to ask for a voice vote. Sure. Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fareed. Um, Council President, I lost connection and had to log out and log back in. What changes were um, proposed to the agenda? No changes were um, proposed for the agenda. We we're voting okay, on, so on accepting this agenda? Correct. Okay, yes. Councilwoman Guillaume? Yeah, yes. Councilman Harrison? Yeah. Councilman Herring? Abstain. Councilwoman Jones? Yes. yes. Uh, Council Vice President Ferguson? Yes. And Council President Curtis? Yes. All right. So the agenda is adopted. Okay. Uh, first on the agenda uh, is the ARPA funds discussion. Um, so I think originally we wanted to put this on there and have Mr. Himmler come, uh, but there was a meeting on Friday uh, with Mr. Himmler. Uh, we said this meeting might be too premature for Mr. Hamlet, but he has been gracious enough to uh, join us tonight anyway. Um, and from that ARPA meeting, we wanted to have a baseline 
uh, spreadsheet that we were coming up with uh, that gave a full accounting of uh, the aqua funds. Um, and so Mr. City Manager, Mr. Simpson, uh, City Treasurer, Mr. Stewart and myself went to the Municipal Center on Sunday to try to pull this together so that the uh, council members uh, can have this. Um, and uh, sent it this morning, I, I agree to short notice. We just got through with it last night and put final touches on it this morning. Uh, we didn't make any additions or subtractions. We just put what is on the opera right now. And I'll share this spreadsheet. Can everybody see the spreadsheet? Vice President Ferguson? Oh, okay. I see Mr. Hamlet says yes. Okay. All right. So, what we tried to do is just make this very simple. Uh, some things we kept uh, on these two tabs are uh, basically what Mr. Himmler sent to us, but uh, this tab is has basically all the funds from the uh, ARPA funds accounted for in some form or another. So we received $4.3 million from the federal government and, roll, and column D is basically the the allocation from the council of how these funds should be allocated. Um, the the project names are in column A, uh, and the amount is in column D. Uh, anything that we have not allocated from a council's desire is this um, pot of funds is revenue loss unallocated. This is what we have not specifically allocated to a project. One million dollars. Um, in column F, these are all the expenditures that have been attributed to the aqua funds. That total amount that we've already spent in aqua funds is $1.2 million. Now, of what we spent, we have some contracts out there that we've actually obligated. Uh, so as you see in column G, these are the remaining obligations on what we have uh, contracted out there. So based on column G, we have remaining $169,000 that we have tied up in actual contracts that we've signed. So according to, I guess, how the federal government looks at it, we have either spent or obligated $1.4 million of our aqua funds, which is in column H. So based on a total amount we received, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so people can see. Based on a total amount we received of $4.2 million, minus what we have spent and or obligated with contracts, we have $2,892,274 to either spend or obligate by the end of, of um, this calendar year, December 31st, 2024. Uh, and I see your hand, Council Member uh, uh, Farid. I'm gonna come to you in a second. Let me, um, just top, just some small notes to this. So when we, when we um, pass some legislation, for example, I know during a meeting on um, uh, Friday, uh, Councilman Heron noted the elevator project. Well, in the elevator project, we specifically mentioned that the elevator project we will be paid for in the capital expenditures. We did not attribute that to opera funding. That's how the resolution is, is um, put together. So that's why the note here, um, the elevator project is coming from capital expenditures in accordance with this resolution. It has not been attributed to uh, ARPA funding. Um, and so with that, I believe there's other uh, resolutions that we probably have put together that we attribute to capital funding that we did not attribute to ARPA funding and it has been attributed to capital expenditures and paid from that bucket. So if you don't see something here that you may think that we sh it should be included. Well, that's because it has not been included. 
Uh, so with that, I think that's the overall very general basis of where we are. Again, the spirit sheet was just to show where we are, not add anything or subtract anything, just a basis of, hey, where are we with the ARPA funds? Uh, Councilwoman Fareed. Thank you, Council President. On that question, though, um, because there are some items that have resolutions for them, but they were not attributed to ARPA, but they came out. For example, the police cars, the code enforcement car. Mm -hmm. So what's what's the how did those end up coming out of ARPA? And I, this is not a question about did we have enough money for it? This is just a procedural question. Why did those things come out of ARPA if the resolution did not specify them to come out of ARPA? I That's do one not... question, I have another. Okay. Okay. The, the question is to that is, I do not know. Um, uh, and maybe Mr. Stewart could, um, could answer that if he has an answer for it. Mr. Stewart? Um, all right, thanks for having me here. Um, the original plan was to have these paid through the ARPA the ARPA um, fund, but how the resolutions were written, they should have actually said these funds are coming from ARPA but paid um, in the capital funds. So that was a procedural error there that um, kind of pushed us back where um, we had to do it this way. But they should have been in the resolution saying these are these will be paid through the ARPA funds and capitalized. Mm -hmm. So um, just a follow up question on that. When you say the original plan was to have them go through ARPA, what what plan are you speaking of? Was there a, some original resolution that said that they were supposed to go through? Or well, were they but... were they put in the budget under the ARPA funds? I don't remember that because I, I think these things have been budgeted under their respective departments. Yes. So these were budgeted under the ARPA um, deferred account, but included in capital as well, because the idea was to move, was to pay for it out of ARPA and um, account for it in um it's capital because it's capital item. Um, so that was the original thought. Um, but moving forward, we had discussed that um, these assets or these capital items would have been um, covered by using the ARPA fund. However, it was not written in the resolution as such. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Council President, my other question has to do with things that we we know that they were intended to come out of ARPA because, for example, um, we, you know, uh, wrote a resolution to pay for an engineer or for a consultant to give us an estimate for it. But then there's no additional resolution for the actual work, but spend was done against it. And I just, again, want to understand what the controls are because my understanding was that any spend over six thousand dollars needed to have a resolution with it um could you give an example of what you're talking about Perhaps okay so council chambers renovations upgrade mm -hmm. that has spend against it but there's no resolution there is a resolution contract approved on um, R10-2024 and R-2028 for the um, for the work to just to do the the assessments. So that has gone. Um, this this full twenty eight thousand dollars is is in accordance with the assessments under that contract. None of the actual work for the improvements has taken place because we don't have a contract for it. So that so you're talking about resolution R28, right? That that's just the proposal where we allocated 29705, right? <laughs> yeah. 
but I guess what I'm wondering is why is it against the three? It, sh it should be two separate lines, shouldn't it? Because the 300000 is for the actual renovation. The 28669 was for the estimate for that. Because we uh, need to know. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I interrupt you. I apologize. Go ahead. Um, so I, I don't want to confirm fuse the two because 300 we're going to need more than 300,000 right the 28669 did they tell us how much the estimate was uh we still don't have that information yet and that's another issue that we can tackle but yeah because I thought from the budget that Mr. Um, Stewart presented it was actually 350 not 300 the the what he's saying should be the budget for yeah, 20, we have fiscal year 2025. Yeah, we haven't heard anything back from them. So um, the the objective with this spreadsheet is just to have what do we know, and what we know is that it was desired to put to allocate 300. But even with that, it's not obligated. So um, at the end of the day, it for for these line items that aren't obligated, um, unless we obligate it, it, it doesn't matter. No, I understand what I'm saying is that in the budget, Mr. Stewart, like Mr. Stewart sent us over an email and it said the fiscal year 2025 budget for this was 350, but now this is only showing 300. So is that an underestimate? Should we put this up to 350? I, we could, I mean, that's fine. But I don't know if it will, well, yes, we could. Yes, we could. But I don't know if doing so would be productive because, um, I mean, yes, we could. Okay, and I'm and and it's not the exact amount that I'm like I'm not questioning the um is this the right amount I'm just trying to reconcile the information that we're being given. So if Mr. Stewart was telling us that the budget should be 350. I was expecting that this right here would be 350, not 300. So that's what I'm asking. What What's the difference? I don't, I don't know. It's been expected. I'm Can sorry, I, Mr. Stewart. Can ahead. I? Yes. So what you're looking at here is the 2024 budget where we had said that we would have put 300,000 in for the council chamber renovation. Um, this year, when after our discussion, if you saw one of my notes to everyone is to say that a decision was made to increase that amount by $50,000. And that's why the 2025 budget has 350. Right, right. So that's what we're talking about, the 2025 budget. Right. Okay. All right. So, so that's how that came about. It was a decision made in the meeting. Um, um, let me see what date it was. But we that's were fine. We don't, I, I believe you. I believe you. I mean, that's fine. I, I don't see the exercise is even if we increase this to three fifty, it's still not obligated. And so, what we have to come to a decision on um, is how we're going to take care of this two point eight million dollars roughly $2.9 million. Um, and so what the, the proposal that's on the table um, is two proposals. Um, one is a nuclear proposal and one is not so nuclear, as Mr. Hamill has stated. The proposal is that we've had this money for what, a couple of years now. And we've only spent $1.4 million. The idea that we're going to obligate or spend $2.9 million between now and December 31st is highly unlikely. So um, Mr. Himmler has suggested that we, and in and, and conjunction with uh, uh, Councilwoman Guillaume, have found a way to be able to accomplish all these projects that we have here, including adding $50,000 to the $300,000 item here, um, they found a way to utilize the aqua funds and still accomplish these projects. The way that we do that is that we 
we use this remaining $2.9 million uh, to pay for our operating expenses for the city government. Um, and if we can find $2.9 million to spend it on between now and December 31st, that's ideal because then we can expend those items and we'll have to turn any money back. That's the, um, the first option. The last option is a nuclear option where we use the full $2.9 million for expenses for uh, salaries between now until 2026, which is when all the funds have to be spent. Uh, and the new guidance ha allows for us to, um, to allocate, not to allocate, to obligate these funds for personnel costs through 2026. Uh, but uh, the the caution from Mr. Himmler is that if we get our estimates wrong, then we might still have to send some money back. Uh, but we're confident that we'll spend the entire amount of personnel costs. But I do want to defer to Mr. Himmler as our uh, specialist, opera specialist, to see if we could spend the money through between now and uh, December 31st, thereby freeing up a surplus of $2.9 million that we can then apply to the projects that we have on hand. Excuse me, Council President. I, I appreciate that, and I can appreciate your desire to move forward with the questioning, but I haven't finished asking my questions. Oh, I, I thought you had two questions and you asked them. I apologize. I thought you were done. Yes, because the I'm asking the reason why I asked about the 350 is I know you want to get there to decide what option to do, but I think in order for us to do it, we need to know how much we're expecting to spend in those areas and then decide if we think it's something that we can um, obligate by the end of the year or not. I think there's that interim step. So we can talk about it now as we're having this budget conversation or we can go with a nuclear option and just say boom let's move everything else we still have to have that conversation at some point to say how much do we think we're going to spend in these areas so that we can make sure that that money that we just say okay it's the nuclear option we're going to take all of it we still need to make sure that we spend it on these things and if we don't specify and say what these things are what the amounts are and we just put it all into one bucket, when are we gonna come back to have the conversation about the projects? So I understand your question. Um, the answer is that we would come back. The, the, the issue that we have right now is that time is not on our side. And so if we're able to come to a decision and say, okay, well, we're gonna, we're going to use this $2.9 million to pay for operating expenses, then that gives us time to talk about all these items here to, to see if, hey, maybe 350 is not enough. Maybe you want to push that up to $400,000. But all of that will require us to come together as a council to discuss these things, to prioritize these things, and all of that takes time. By the time we have those conversations, we're going to be pushing up to the deadline to be to either have spent it or obligated. So by the time we finish that conversation, now we got to go. Let's say we were able to do it in November and it finally come to a you know a consensus. Now we got to find a contract and sign a and hurry up and sign a contract. Well, then we haven't even talked about. If, if an RFP went out for some of these things. So the time is of the essence uh, and this and being able to allocate, I mean, obligate these funds uh, to our operating expenses will give us some breathing room to thoroughly discuss what is appropriate uh, for the projects we have here. Can some of these go up? Can some of these go down? Are there any other projects that we want to work on? Because we still have one million thirty thousand dollars that we haven't allocated uh, to to anything. So, what other programs do we want to provide to our citizens that can help um, um, uh, our, our citizens? So, uh, that's the answer. Okay, I I, I, res I respectfully disagree that we shouldn't use the budget sessions to talk about the budget items that we said we were gonna talk about, but 
I didn't say that. I, I will. I will. I will yield. We can kick it down the down the um the pike and talk about it at another time. Well, maybe I misunderstood your question because I, I wasn't saying that. I mean, you can talk about anything. I was just trying to answer your question of when are we going to be able to discuss these items? We can discuss them at any time. What I'm saying is we're in the budget work sessions now to talk about the budget items. I understand that there's going to be additional money that it makes sense to put to operating and then we can figure out other projects. But we're not talking about other projects right now. We're talking about these projects. So these projects, I don't know why we wouldn't talk about them in the in the budget session. This is like the fourth budget session that we've had to go over the ARPA projects that are already identified. So this is not a an all or nothing conversation. And if we can't figure out all of the projects to spend the money on that we shouldn't talk about any of them right now. But I'll yield. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just not. I'm not understanding. And I apologize, uh, Councilwoman Jones. Thank you, Council President. Just for clarity's sake, um, and um, so you're saying that money has to be obligated, or has to be it has to be obligated by December the thirty first and spent. Or just obligated with a contract. Obligated um, with a contract. Okay. And, and if well, go ahead. And and we uh, I guess um, uh, the city manager can answer this. Um, we have not heard from um, Fel Miss Felder. We have. Uh, she has submitted permitting uh, for the elevator project, and we're supposed to have. Uh, the proposals uh, this week, uh, I did stress to her that uh, times will, we, there's an expectation to have this much sooner than later. Uh, she said no later than Wednesday. Okay, if she's so if she's overwhelmed, like I suggested earlier, because we can all, uh, we, I still have the uh, contact information for the persons that did the uh, council chambers uh, for the county, Prince George's County. So, if, okay. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, uh, City Manager Simpson. Okay. Um, and uh, Councilwoman Farid, I think I understand what you're saying now, and I apologize. So you're saying that in this session, you want to address these from a budgetary standpoint, which I'm fine with. I was looking at it from an uh, opera standpoint. So I understand, I think I understand what you're trying to what you're trying to say. If it has to, if 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 we want to plan for 350 for the budget in 2025, then we should adjust the budget for 2020 for 2025. Am I getting that right? Yes, partially. And I think it also makes sense to have the conversation along the lines of where Ms. Jones was going. Okay, we're thinking it's going to be 350. When can we get a confirmation on whether it's 350 or 500 to get a sense of if this is something that we need to defer? But if we're going to get an answer on Wednesday, I wouldn't say that this is something that we go into operations and then come back at a later point to talk about it because we're talking about it right now. Okay, so I'm sure, sure. it's more so as we go through these projects, get an understanding of, you know, the stormwater rebate one. When we get to that one, I would just say, you know what, let's just end it. Let's not even try to extend it more. So we know that full pot of that money is, is can go towards operations versus, you know, other things with the uniforms. We think that's going to be done by, you know, the end of September, whatever the end of the application period is. That's not something that needs to be a part of the the operational fund transfer because we're going to use it before October. So I just want to go through what these items are so we can get a sense of how close are we to them being real versus them not being real. And if they're not close to being real, understanding what what's the holdup, because some of these things have been in flight for a long time. Got you. Um, and so I, I so I understand it from from the budgetary standpoint. Um, I, I think that uh, there's just one caveat that I, I, I think we're missing is that we can do that. So I agree, we can do that. At the same time, um, we can do what 
Mr. Himmler uh, and Councilman Guillaume have proposed. I think we do both. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We go through, figure out which ones are, these are no goals and put them into the operation fund and just move that stuff over, as opposed to moving everything over and having to revisit all of this again. Okay. And I think then that's where we disagree because I, and this is my opinion that everything should go over and we can still have that conversation. All right. Um, so, uh, Mr. Himmler, did we capture, does this spreadsheet capture what the baseline for what we were trying to get to on Friday? Um, yes and no from a quick review, because I, I, we just saw this about an hour ago. So, um, oh, okay. um, a couple, couple things I would note, um, that would probably increase your obligation piece. The Glen, uh, Glen Orton Housing Authority, the city has a grant agreement with them for the 60,000. So that is actually technically obligated. Plus there's actually payments going through the process now um, for their first payment of a, of a number of projects. So I would okay. say you probably don't have to zero that out, which is what it appears to be doing. Um, so I would say that remaining to be obligated is 60 and that's going to happen because there's only about 15,000 left. Um, the HOA assistance one, it appears as though the city's only reporting, I guess, one grant agreement with Woodmore Town Center, but they actually have two. With, there's one with cottages at Glen Arden for the 60,000. Um, so technically there's 120,000 that's been obligated with some of it already being spent for Woodmore. Which one is that? Uh, the HOA assistance program. Right now you have re remaining, the best I understand in your last column, you have essentially, um, what I'm saying is you have right now two grant agreements that obligate $120,000 in total. Um, yeah. And potentially a third one's going to be coming in a couple of weeks um, from Glen Arden Towns because we've spoken to them and they're just out getting some quotes on a potential project first. Okay. This only took into account uh, what we talked about is, is where we are. So we didn't have any, or at least I didn't have any information uh, of what is to come. And, and so this isn't uh, an end-all spreadsheet. This is just, and, and, and I know that we're going to change this, going to add stuff to it, um, but this is just to show us where we were at that point in time. So um, if we have a, a grant agreement for, for the, go on, not, what we say? Yeah, we have, HOAs. the city has two grant agreements with two HOAs so far that obligate 120,000. Okay. And just one oh, other note, just one other note too, if I may, just in the lines of transparency for for myself. Um, the intergenerational poverty relief fund, the city actually has given pre-approval notices for roughly fifty-four thousand dollars of awards. And there's probably another sixteen thousand that's actually already been people have applied for, and this is going through the review process. So, so that budget will likely be seventy thousand if you continue with what's in the pipeline. Not, so you'll have room to potentially move money out, out of that one. But so we have seventy thousand. That's time. For seventy thousand, roughly, we think based upon what's already been approved, and there's about four or five applications that are in review. That if they're successful, which we think they will be. We'll add another sixteen thousand. So the, the grand total should be roughly seventy thousand for that program. Okay. All right. So I'm with you on the concept. I, th I think it's just, you know, at some point, you know, just sort of 
a lot of minds when we talk about Friday, and I think to Ms. Fareed's point is this is the settling on what can be obligated by, and I guess you, your intention too, settling on what can be obligated, you know, relatively quickly and what can't, and then the ones that you can't, if you want to continue with those, you know, you identify, move the money to saving to general fund salaries and benefits and pay those out. Um, our preference still is if you can charge those costs between now and the end of the year, that would be preferred just because the longer you spread it out, there's more record keeping and all that that the city has to do. And we're, you know, just anytime there's more record keeping and, and, and that, it you know, there's a greater risk of something not, something wrong happening, errors and mistakes being made. Okay. But this was definitely right. a good part of trying to get everybody on the same page is at least what the quote the budget is, as you highlighted in green. Okay. All right, so that brings the number down to $2.7 million. All right. So, uh, there... Ms. yeah, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Councilman Harris. Yeah, because um, I'm thinking in the same vein as uh, Councilwoman Fareed, because like that one, that revenue loss unallocated at $1,030,000, um, that's actually, that's, that's going to get broken out eventually based on the 2025 budget, I'm assuming. Because there's projects that's not on this list that are in the 2020, on a, in the proposed 2025 budget. Um, looking at the budget, it's saying that we have $115,000 remaining um, of unallocated uh, opera revenue. So why are we not breaking out this, this $1 million number on the projects that we actually have, are proposing, for, proposing in 2025? Because I don't see, yeah, this is like a, these are all the numbers for 2024 budget, but nothing from 2025 is listed in the green that we're proposing to bring on board or we're proposing to do. So I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just curious on how do we reconcile that to the budget? Because again, the budget is showing $115,000 and all funds left over that haven't been allocated. They need to be allocated or obligated. On a revenue unallocated amount of 1,030 based on, I guess, the 2024 budget. Should we break down that, that like I said, again, should we break down that million dollar number on the projects that we're looking at? If, especially if we're gonna be looking at what can and cannot be obligated by the end of the year? We, to ask your question, yes, we certainly can. Um, again, from what our discussion was on Friday, it was just get a baseline spreadsheet out there uh, that shows where we are right now. Uh, so we can go through and we could, based on a 2025 budget, uh, break this $1.03 million down to include what we have planned for 2025. Um, that is that is perfectly fine. Um, I, I th that's perfectly fine. Um, my question is, and I think we're talking about two different things. Um, is even when we do that, and I do think we need to see what we want to allocate it to. Even when we do that, what's the likelihood of us having contracts in hand? by December 31st for all of those projects. Well, I mean, like in this budget 2025, they have um, police cars, $86,000. Um, you think it is, they think it's going to take four months to get these police cars? I thought the ADA project for, I don't know what that is for. I thought we're doing an ADA project or a sidewalk project. Is that all that we're doing on McLean Street? Is that included in here? I think they can start that now. Um, yeah, yeah, and that was and that was another thing, and which is why it was I, I believe, and Mr. Simpson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, 
uh, that that was, uh, where did I put warp one? Is that, is that the $443,000, Mr. Simpson? Uh, so that $443,000, that is part of the money for the Ward 3 streets. Um, the sidewalk work oh. that, yep, yep, there it is. There it is, sorry, thank you, because there's a lot of stormwater stuff in here, oh. so. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I think uh, Councilman Herons may be referring to the sidewalk work on Glen Arm Parkway from McLean yeah. to MLK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to say that those repair calls uh, that that where it says one, two, and three, uh, because I think it was twenty three thousand. Let me just confirm um, at the resolution because I think that's the one there. Yeah. And he had 50. Give me one moment. Okay. Um, Mr. Stewart, when we pay for these capital projects, where does that money come from? Does that money come from operations? Does that money come from reserves? It comes from reserves, capital. Okay. But in any case, the surplus that come from operating actually filter down into capital and filter through. So if there's anything in capital that um, need to be paid for, we could still use funds remaining from operations. And uh, okay. I just wanted to interject something here. Uh, Mr. Herring spoke about the 86,000 for the police vehicle. Now that is for the computers that should have been put into the, the cars. And those are, we're, we're still waiting on those to come in. There is resolution for that. I will look for the resolution that's related to the computers and um, and see how we could deal with that. But that could be obligated because it's in the hands of, I think it's um, global. It's in the hand of global right now. So they just need to get back to us. Yes. All right. Okay. Mr. Himmler, I have a quick question as it relates to um, capital expenditures. Um, are those eligible for ARPA funds if the allocation of those expenditures span a certain period of time that, uh, I guess, postdates the requirements for when the money has been spent? Yeah, capital capital expenditures and, and the magnitude you're talking about these are relatively small. So, um, yeah, they're they're eligible cost, and because you don't have revenue loss in particular, you don't need to worry about any um, asset uh, holding periods and and uh, divestiture of those assets. Okay. Um, typically under federal grants, but because you're doing revenue loss, you're under 10 million. Those rules don't apply. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Councilwoman Farid. Yes, can can we add a column for what the fiscal year 2025 budget needs to be? For example, the call a bus. We already bought the bus. So there's there's like the this column H, I'm not sure what that's supposed to represent. Like we already spent the 123716. So for fiscal year 2025, we should not have anything in the budget for the call of us, and unless there's some additional things that we need to do to it, because we, we when we're talking about what we need to do for next year, that's how we know what we need to um, allocate or obligate. Oh, uh, is is the call of us in the 2025 budget? I don't have that in front of me right now. I'm looking at this spreadsheet. I'm asking if we can put in a column here, because what it looks like here, if you look on row 13, you mm -hmm. have the allocation of ARPA funds, 123, the expenditures is 123. And then in the column H, total expended and remaining obligated. Yeah, so that's the a... fact that you're, you're combining those two, but you, you have to separate out what's remaining obligated so we can see that. 
I don't yeah. know why we're combining that. And I thought uh -oh. I heard Mr. Mr. Um, Stewart say that the green was representing the fiscal year 2024 budget, which is why the council chambers was at 300 versus the 350. So I'm just saying, can we just have a column to say what we need to do for 2025? If the call of us is done, then that that column would have zero in there for that. Yeah, so column H is, is not something we have to, column H is what we've either spent or obligated. That's just, uh, the formula is just this plus this. So if we only spent, if we spent uh, 120,000 already, the remaining obligated would have been 3,716, which would have got you this. So this is only to get the total, all we've had either spent or all that we have remaining obligated out there to get, to subtract that from what we, the, the total ARPA budget to get what we need to either obligate or spend. By... Right, and that's what, right, that's the column that I'm asking to put in. What is what else we need to obligate or spend for this item, which would be in the fiscal year 2025 budget? So with the call of us, there is nothing else that we need to obligate or spend. So that should be a zero. We, we need a column to show what else we need to obligate, which would be the budgeted amounts. Mr. Curtis, if you don't mind. Yes, Mr. Stewart. So in column I, she's asking that you insert... I understand what she's asking. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not rocket science. Um, that's fine. So what do we do from there? I guess is my question next. We add a column. And we go 2025. Mm -hmm. Right. So this one example, gold room. Right now, it looks like we don't need to do anything with that, but we actually need to put in a budgeted amount for what we think the gold room upgrade is going to cost. Granted, we do not have the, um, we don't have the estimate back, but the consultant that was supposed to be doing the, uh, the council chambers was also supposed to include the gold room in that. So we should put an amount there. So we, that so from that we can say okay this is what we want to spend on the gold room upgrade is this something that we can obligate by the end of the year because as mr himmler said it's it's preferred that we go through and get these things obligated before the end of the year rather than moving them over into the operations fund because it creates less paperwork but we can't even determine if we're if it's something that we can or can't obligate by the end of the year if we have if it's zero Okay, so what's the, I mean, what's the amount? I don't know, 350. It's, 40, it's 43,500 for... That's, that's not it, Mr. Stewart. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's what Mr. Stewart has in the, in the budget for 2025 for the gold room, but I think that's not enough either. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You guys are talking about two different things. He's saying 43,000, you're saying... 350,000. Before, he, yes, he put in the budget for 2025 that the gold room renovation would be 43,000 and change. I think that's not enough. So you asked okay. me what the amount was. I'm telling you what I think the amount should be. That might be yeah. too high. So my question would be instead to Mr. Uh, Stewart, when you put that amount of 43,000, what was that based off of? Um, that amount was based on um, revenue loss. I worked out the formula for the couple of years that um, they would have lost funds, and that's the amount that I came up with. That's the amount that was set in 2023. And, okay, so um, that so then, yeah. sorry, that amount has nothing to do with the renovations. That's just to cover the losses. Yes. To right. make the gold room. Okay. So we need to put an amount in for the gold room renovation. You say how much? Are you asking me? I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, I, I'm asking you how much. I said 350. I don't know if anyone thinks that that's too much or if that's not enough. 
Mr. President. Yes, sir. I think that's entirely too much. I think that if I'm sitting here looking at a playground that's not finished, streets that need to be repaired, and uh, seniors that need to be uh, 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 looked after so they can age in place, $350,000 in a gold run that's not even breaking even right now, and it, there's, no, there's no guarantee that you're going to even recoup that money in a year, it's entirely too much. Mrs. Uh, Stewart did a calculation based on the gold run as a business that it lost $43,000. So that's what we should be putting in there if we're going to do any renovations at all. Um, mm -hmm. $350,000 for a gold room, I think that's that's completely, when we got people in this community that need things, and you know, y'all can make do, do $250,000 for kids for tutoring, $50,000 for uniforms. I want a grant program for some seniors. I want a playground that's completed. I want a road that needs to be repaired for bus traffic because people use that traffic to get back and forth to work. And you want to put 350 in a gold room? I've never uh, okay. heard that until it was in all my life. I'm sorry. I'm putting out an amount because it was asked of me. There is actually a resolution that was already presented and passed for the gold room renovation. So I'm not just pulling some project out of thin air. We have passed a resolution. So it is something that is the will of the council to renovate the gold room. We just need to put an amount to it. I get it if you don't agree with the resolution, but the resolution passed. Well, I mean, I don't agree with the resolution. I don't agree. With, I definitely don't agree with the total amount of money to put in that gold room. Seeing how nobody here has a, has experience with that gold room, I don't see why y'all going to sit there and put money into a gold room when you don't know what it need, what it needs to operate, what it needs to make money. We just spent over over almost a hundred thousand dollars or so close to it doing it no more than seven years ago, and you're going to put three hundred fifty thousand dollars more into it. That's ridiculous. And you haven't even turned it around and start seeing a profit being made. But then again, but I, my whole thing comes back to the people that needs to be touched by this money. That's what the money is for, to touch the people, to help the people out in the community. I, I understand what you're saying, Councilman Herring, but, but but we already had a resolution. It was R39-2024 that passed for the renovation of the Gold Room. If we want to say that we want to disregard that and we don't want to do that anymore, then that's another discussion but i don't think it's improper for me to suggest that we have an amount in the budget for something that we've already passed the resolution to do that's that's the proper procedure the council passes resolutions for what the will of the council is to do and then we make sure that there's funding to be able to do that thing yeah can i just say something. And I think this is an example of what I'm talking about. Like, and I'm not saying that this isn't a healthy debate of what should be attributed to it and what should not be attributed to it. But there's so many things that we want to do. Um, and we can do it and we can have a, a healthy debate about it. Um, my concern is that as we take the time to debate, <laughs> and come to a consensus on what it is we want to obligate or what it is we want to allocate, because that'll be the first step. And then the effort that would involve us going out to actually obligate or spend, my concern is that we just do not have the time to do that. Where the option is on a table to where we can have the healthy debate still allocate more funds to more programs, still do all the things that we want to do on this spreadsheet with the surplus that will be created from just spending the $2.7 million on eligible operating expenses that will create a surplus in this fiscal year, in 2025, that will allow us to do that. Now, if we can't tackle and we can't define everything, then we can make amendments to the budget. So, I, I, and that's why I said, I think we're talking about two different things that kind of relate, but if, if we're going to wait to develop this full spreadsheet to have this allocation, then go out and get the obligation site. The discussion alone is going to take forever and a lifetime. So that is, that is my point. And I don't know if I've articulated that well. So if, if I haven't, please let me know. Because I'm not disagreeing with what members want to do. I'm just suggesting a way to not have to send this money back and do all that we want to do. 
council president, but what is what we want to do if it's not the resolutions that we've already passed to say what we want to do? That's the point that I'm making. I'm not saying that we shouldn't discuss any other projects, but certainly resolutions that we've already passed, that we said that we would use ARPA funds for, we should be moving forward on those things, unless it's the will of the council to no longer do those things. I agree. I agree with you, Ms. Councilwoman Fareed. I 100% agree that we should move forward with those items, and we can move forward with those items. Either way, Mr. President. Yes, sir, Councilman Mary. Okay, so we can just, like I say, try to wrap this up. So what number are we looking at that we want to possibly put to salaries? Uh, uh, Councilman Mary, I want to just push back on that. It doesn't mean it's all have to be salaries. For example, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Himmler, for Glenarden Day, that's the operating expense that we're about to pass the, the budget for. We can use ARPA funding to pay for that. It's an operating expense. Let's say the modern day costs $50,000. We can spend $50,000 to ARPA funds that we we're going to use originally, uh, operating funds to use it for. We can spend that in ARPA, create a surplus, and then use um, that surplus to tackle the projects that are on here. But to answer your question, um, is that we have two point approximately because there might be something that's missing from here approximately 2.7 million dollars to apply to operating expenses and or including um salaries okay so i want to follow with this so that comes back to what councilwoman free was saying we need to go through this by detail to see what can and what can that be if we, i well, mean so when do we do that? Because again, if we're trying to get the best number that we can get to see what's going to go to operating expenses, we're going to have to go through here line by line or through the whole budget, I guess, again, and see what's what. Because now we're pulling our Glen on day, and I guess we got other events that we could use. And so I'm just like, I'm trying, I mean, it's not like another whole couple of work budget work sessions in and of itself. I don't think so. Um, uh, I don't understand what you were saying in the beginning. Oh, I was I was saying it seems like we have to do like Councilwoman Free was saying and go through this by detail to see what can and cannot be obligated in order to get to the number that we need to show to move to show what we're gonna move to what the salaries or whatever we're gonna move it to. Yeah. Um, That's okay. And 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 what I'm saying is that instead of trying to rush and do all of that, then uh, all right. Okay. That's why, I mean, my thing is, I thought you were just going to just go ahead and move it. I know you want to get to a better number or a possible number, but I thought you were just going to move to 2.7 and then I, and then just, we got 3.2 million in, in salaries for 2025 in the budget. And I thought we were going to just move the 2.7 to cover three point, I mean, cover those salaries and that would free up the upper money for general usage. I thought that's where we were trying to go. Something similar. That was the the nuclear option. Uh, Mr. Himmler uh, suggested a, a, a non a, a, a less nuclear option uh, that we can find operating expenses between now and December thirty first, including salaries, including other operating expenses that we can throw this money to. And if there's anything left over, then we can um, uh, obligate the remainder funds to salaries. Uh, for 2020 uh, through 2025 and 2026, if necessary. Did I get that right, Mr. Himmler? Um, basically, yes. I mean, Mr. Herring, I, I guess, and there's somebody from who's been doing this for a dozen plus clients. Uh, I think what the intention of this is is that, and, and you're at some point, preferably sooner rather than later, and this is what I think the president's trying to do, is you need to de figure out what can be obligated be before December 31 right. of this year and estimate what can be obligated, which is what the president's trying to do in the orange the orange column. And and once you settle on those, then you have a, you're going to have a, a funds remaining. Then it's a matter of 
you know, how much of the 25 budget can be charged, you know, to cover that? Does it carry you beyond December 31? If it does, then, then you, you're talking about salaries, which involves additional reporting because you're gonna have to keep, you have to record, uh, keep track of positions that were filled um, as of December 31, 2024. You can fund those, keep funding those positions, but it's just more record keeping, which is why we don't prefer the nuclear option. You know, and and one of the benefits of using the revenue loss provision because you're less than ten million dollars in grants is there isn't a whole heck of a lot of reporting to Treasury. The minute you start getting into positions that go beyond twelve thirty one twenty four, then the Feds, if they come in and want to audit you, they're going to be like, okay, we want to see the position list as of December 31, 2024, salaries, and every, every pay period that you charged, make sure that there wasn't another person added to that charge that was charged to ARPA, which is why we're stressing to most of our clients, if you can, to charge as much cost as possible if, if it looks like you're gonna not obligate 100% of the funds in the next five months. Yeah. A lot of these projects on here are assuming nothing's going to get obligated between now and 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 um, the the end of the year, right? Just, you know, pick a small one, speed bump, for example, right? It was budgeted, or well, in the green column is twenty five thousand, but right the other the other columns assume there's no obligation going to happen over the next five months. If that's the case, okay, then. But is it like is it possible that those funds can be obligated through a contract, and um, in the next five months? If so, that doesn't necessarily you know that twenty five thousand could be used to stay in that category. Yeah. But at some point, you have to settle on what you want to do and to figure out the the math equation as to what's not going to be obligated by the end of December. Thank you, clearly, you have salaries, you know, based on at least the proposed budget, you know, the four-year salaries in a proposed budget was like $3.4 million with benefits. Assuming a half a year runs you from July 1 through 20 through December, you could easily charge probably $1.6, $1.7 just in salaries alone for the whole first six months of the fiscal year. And in this case, you need another million, so you're going to need to charge... You know, operating costs in some form or fashion to that. Thank you. Vice President Ferguson. Yeah, I just um, wanted to comment on the um, the 350. Are you leaving that in there for the goal? Um, it's up to the council to decide. It's What's the absolutely uh, to me? It's absolutely too much. Um, I'm I'm offended at the fact that uh, recently we um in the beginning asked for four hundred thousand for the council chambers, and that's and and probably need more than that considering the, all of the all the um problems that we have, you know, with um everything when we have meetings in person. But um definitely um I, I don't even know how it went down to three hundred was originally asked for 400, but definitely well, uh, 350 is extremely too high as far as I'm concerned, and it needs to be removed. Okay. All right, so we're not doing 350. And even if, it, well, let's settle on, on another amount. Let's let's say we do $200,000. Huh. Um, so that's 20. Um, is there a likelihood that we will have this $200,000 obligated by December 30th, December 31st? I believe that we can if we if we go, uh, say okay this is what we're going to do because because when that resolution came out it should have been worked on immediately then to get the um, the uh, proposals to find out how much it would cost number one for the electric the electrical in the gold room to be uh, upgraded that's a, okay. a, a must to have the kitchen uh, some things in the kitchen upgraded uh, the floor in, in the kitchen. Um, you know, uh, have it upgraded to, you know, it's kitchen, you know, to have the uh, AP if, uh, AP um, uh, equipment and stuff that's needed, you know, but we, we need 
And, and yeah, we got these projects, but we also need to um, uh, move on them, you know, just like the Church Street project. We got the proposal. Let's look at the proposal and then get that moving and get uh, in, uh, NZI or whoever is going to do the concrete work, get them out here, you know, let them know that we, this is what we want and when can we get a date to get started. I mean, it's going to put uh, a lot of uh, 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 pressure on the administration, not necessarily pressure, but they're just going to have to, you know, we can't keep dragging our feet. We got we to move on the things that we need that we want to get done. So I agree. Uh, my, my question was, though, including the RFP process, because if we're going to spend this much money, we got to put our RFP for who can do the work. There's a time allotted for the RFP. Now, mind you, we're about to go on recess. Um, so you take that, and that work can still be done. I agree. It can still be done while we're out on recess. But we have the RFP process. Uh, then we get it back. So can we do that in five months? And, and, and not only that, we also have these other projects here. And if we're expecting the, the city manager to go to create contracts for all these items that we don't have contracts for in five months and still run the city, um, I, I think that's a bit of a tall ask. Um, Councilwoman Fareed, Yes, thank you, Council President. I, I suggest that we go through for the resolutions that have already been passed that are for ARPA funds and decide what the amounts should be. As Council Vice President said, she asked for 400,000, she doesn't know how it got down to 300,000. So that's something that we should look at and put it to the right amounts. There's no reason for anybody to be offended about what amounts are being asked for. This is for us to discuss what the amount should be budgeted for, and then can we get those used by the end of the year? The, after we've gone through the resolutions, which are the things that we've already said we were gonna use ARPA funds for, how much money is there left and what other ideas are there, and then that's where we can deliberate on which programs we should be moving forward with. Or if we can't decide on which programs, then deferring that money to you know the option, the second option, and putting it into operations, and then at a later time figuring out what to use the money for. But this is just it's a it's a straight order of process. We put forward resolutions for what to do with ARPA funds. And then whatever is remaining, we figure out what else we want to do. Yeah, and, and to your, to that point, Councilman Fareed, to the best of our abilities, we can you know scour the resolutions again. But to the best of our abilities, we have been able to um, track down the resolutions. Yeah. So so can we so can we go through the the resolution for the council chambers? Should it be three fifty or four hundred? Can we just go from the top to the bottom? Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, and we started so with the gold room. Sorry, we started with the gold room upgrade just because that was first on the list. I, I, you asked me for an amount. I said an amount. I don't know if it's too much or too little. I have no idea what renovations will cost. So um okay. this is for us to say what is what we think is the ap appropriate amount for a renovation and so i'll put two two hundred thousand dollars in there councilman vice president ferguson yeah um do anyone remember whether the uh the go i mean not the go home but the kitchen was that involved in that um resolution because i mean if that's the case I, i'm thinking just the go room um that particular room not the uh, kitchen and and uh, things like that. Was that included in the um consider? I believe it was. I'll pull it up now. I okay. believe it was supposed to be for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next is South Street Park. That's already taken care of. Next is residential assistance because Marin that's taken care of small business nonprofit 
Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, Council President, you're going so fast. I don't know this 7th Street Park is done, though. Uh, there's some landscaping, and, and I think there was some benches, so that would be a question for the city manager. Is the money that's left over, which is like 35000 or something, the thir yeah, thirty five four fifteen. do we need to use any of that? We we more than likely will. Okay. Sorry. So I would say let's leave that there. Uh, I'm not okay. sure of the exact numbers, but we will need to use some of that. Do we need any more? No, we do not. No? Okay. Sorry. That's done. That's done. Small business nonprofit assistance program. Uh, I believe that's, is that done? Technically done, Mr. President. There's one applicant that's been non-responsive for several months. So I would just, do your, you're done. Okay. For all intents and purposes. Council Chambers. Is that saying that we've already spent 28669 out of there? Uh, it should it should be separate. It should not be included in this line item, but for, no, it shouldn't. So, but it that, that is, I put that in there because that's actually what's been spent. So the numbers in here in this actual column actually ties to our GL. It ties to our county system of all the funds that we've spent against ARPA. I'm guessing the federal government's going to want some type of records of you know, accounting records. And we'll be able to show to the federal government that yes, we have spent $1.2 million against the opera funds. So that's why that $28,000 is there because it did hit that particular project number. Um, but if you were saying that, we're saying that $300,000 is too low uh, and you wanna increase that, then what do we want to increase that to? And Take into consideration, I don't think the nutrition center. The nutrition center is in the resolution with the council chambers. So thank you. So take into consideration. The, I'm sorry, and also the uh, the fingerprinting room and the bathrooms. They're all in that yeah. same resolution. So take into consideration that whole area. What's the number we want to tie to that? I don't know, because the 400 that was asked previously was, was for the, um, it didn't even include the um, nutritional center. And I think um, Councilman Herring, I think he asked for 100,000 of that. I think that was already covered, right, Councilman Herring? I thought he asked for 50, but he can. Oh, he I only, only asked for 50. 50, yeah. okay, but um so $500,000. Mm -hmm. Let's say let's say $500,000. I agree because it's probably going to be a, uh, a little more than that. Okay. What's the likelihood we're going to be able to go into contract for this $500,000? If I may. I go ahead. I believe we'll definitely know this week. Um, I think it's possible if we're able to identify contractors either through the county or another municipality or another entity that has the same uh, purchasing process or procurement process that we do. Um, I know I was able to do that with the smaller roof. I think it's possible. I, j I just will not know until all of the specs are, are drawn out. Um, and just to add, in the uh, report, uh, there's definitely some hazardous material that will need to be abated during that process. So it's just very difficult to give a solid number until we get that back. Uh, 500,000 would be relatively safe. Uh, and again, I don't want to alarm anyone with that because there's no exposed hazardous material. However, to, to properly abate it during that construction phase is, is definitely uh, a necessity. A necessity. Um, it, it can be done within that time frame once we know. Uh, that part and get an idea of uh, vendors that uh, we can piggyback, a contract that we can piggyback on um, as we've done with a few other things. And I just want to point out to add to Mr. Simpson that this was the same answer two months ago, that we will have something 
hopefully soon. That was two months ago. And now we're saying the exact same thing this week. And I, I don't have confidence that we will have. I, I, I mean, it, this is, it's been utterly ridiculous at this point with um, the people we're working with just to get an estimate of the work. Um, so, but I say that because we, we also have to, you know, estimate, can we get this on a contract? Mr. Hamler? Just a quick clarifying question. So the 500,000 you're saying here, that is would be the new proposed budget in total, right? For this project. Well, this project, correct. Yeah, I just want to make sure, because I part of the, uh, the, I think confusion has always been, you, you guys budget by year and not by the total picture. So I'm trying to keep the total picture here. So in my mind, um, so thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So $500,000, Councilwoman Fareed, did you have another hand? Are we still going through? Or you just, okay. All right, uh, you let out a housing authority. We already took into consideration that. Uh, HOA assistance. Um, are, are we going to, since we've set aside $360,000, uh, since we have money left in this pot, are we gonna allow, um, HOAs who have been actively responding, are we going to increase the limit for them since there's money left in this pot for the intended purpose? I I am in um, favor of that only because uh, I understand that during the pandemic, it hit family members hard, I uh, hit families hard, uh, which then hit HOAs hard. Um, and they could not, they didn't recover all their funds that they could have because, you know, many people got laid off. And so a lot of HOAs are still trying to recover as families are still trying to recover. HOAs are still trying to recover. So if there are HOAs that are communicating with Mr. Himmler and would like to exceed the $60,000 because we have money left in that budget, I would, my vote will be to, um, lift that ceiling. Any objection? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Hamler. Hamler. I'll just refresh your memory. the The program would need to be um, uh, guidelines would need to be modified because those it was really for one time kind of items. Like it wasn't meant to cover uh, losses specifically. So just want to throw that out there. Okay. Guidelines Thank you. modified too if if the council wants to go that way. Okay. Um, Mr. Stewart. Okay, so for the HOAs, the 360 that you see there, um, I have notes here saying that we would reduce it to 300 and send the 60 over to the, um, what's it? The American yeah. Legion. The American, American Legion, yes. Okay. That's fine. Um, but I think we could still do that, but that still leaves a difference of what 180. Um, so any any opposition to what I'm talking about of of revising the the um the guidelines? Yes, what's the hair? Yes, I, I mean, it was done for a one-time capital project and $60,000 is, is quite a bit of money. And I'm still saying I got issues over here that I need to get addressed and things aren't being allocated over here. You know I mean? I, I got, like I said, I got a park, got church street, we got Hay street, you got a uh, seniors, you know? So why don't we go through what we chopping off, what we have or what we're going to put back and then see what other programs we can allocate to before we start increasing existing programs that didn't already exhaust them. I just don't think it's fair across the board when it comes down the the the, 60, the the money was out there for a while and HOAs had an opportunity to take advantage of it and ones that did did and I and I'm glad they did that was that's what it was for we're trying to touch people but we got other obligations in the city also um, so I just feel that we need to look at some of the other projects that don't need to do that don't need I mean that need to be taken care of before we start increasing existing projects that we've already had in place for months. 
Thank you. And again, it's just just an idea, and we're going down the line. So that's that's the next in line. So completely understand. Uh, Mr. Stewart, can you? Is, I, I think that's an old hand. I know you didn't re raise your hand. If you can put your hand down, that'd be great. Uh, Ms. Jones, Councilman Jones. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, I just have a quick question. Has the American Legion, or, or I'm sorry, I always get them mixed up with the American Legion and the VFW and whatever, but uh, have they been notified that, that we are, uh, uh, that there is some, they may receive this grant money and for them so that they can come up with an, uh, ideas, you know, so that it can be spent? I, I, I am not sure. Um, Councilmember Heron? Yeah, Thank you. The, 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 the uh, president was actually on the meeting when we were speaking about it, so they know we were discussing it. So, yes. So you're saying that they do have a plan already, or they don't? Um, they, they have they, they're looking at their parking lot, which needs to be completely repaved, and they also have a roof issue. Okay, so, I mean, do we need to give them a little nudge to let them to know to go ahead and get, you know, uh, contract uh, proposals so, you know, that that money can be spent? By well, December the, be by, I'm sorry, by December 2024? We haven't officially approved it. All right. Yeah. Have, but have we even come up with the guidelines for how right. we would even spend those funds? Uh, Mr. Himmler is shaking his head. No, Mr. Himmler. <laughs> so a refresher on programs like this, that there needs to be like a, a funding opportunities, you know, put it out to, to the public and really it can't be narrowly crafted to one specific group. I mean, you can write criteria that essentially maybe get you there, but there needs to be guidelines put out, posted on the website. If the American Legion is an eligible entity, they can apply, that kind of stuff. You can't just earmark money without going through a process. Yeah, Mr. Hamlet, could we do that with our own funds? Yeah, you know what, your own funds, you follow whatever rules you want to follow, but um, that, that you have to follow. But yeah, with these, just like we did with the, um, the nonprofits, the small business one, you got to put out a guidelines and so that folks have an opportunity to respond. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you can craft it pretty narrow so that there's not too many entities who would be eligible uh, for what the purpose of those funds that you're talking about are. Mm -hmm. So the question would still be the same. Do we have enough time to craft that language, put it out there, and have it obligated by the end of the year? Or would the easier route just be to just use our surplus to give them $60,000? Um but, okay. Councilman Jones, was that it? Yes, that very well, that explained uh, my question. That, ex that answer was very well given. It explained it. Okay. So I take it there no secondary, so I'm increasing the limit for the HOA assistance program. So I will let that be. Uh, now there were a lot of storm water stuff in here. Um, across the city. Um, yeah. Council President, this one was the grant program. I suggested all of that money go back into the pot. There was a deadline. If people didn't apply, we shouldn't try to hold it open, even for a small amount. I think it's just it's just done. Okay. All right. Uh, in a generation of apartment, we already did that. Council President, down. Council President. I'm sorry, Council No, it's okay. No, so for intergenerational, although we already did it, um, I and I agree with the rest of the money going into the pot. I just want to say that when we put the money back in the pot, that I am going to do another intergenerational poverty relief fund, but it's not going to have the stringent restrictions that ARPA had us have. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. President, also on that, um, I do know a couple of seniors actually can submit their paperwork now, so I think we shouldn't put the whole, whole thing into the pot because um, they are submitting applications right now. One just finished his. He should be turning it in tomorrow. And I think that two other teams I know may be doing one is. Yeah, so I think that's, I think what, what Mr. Himmler said, sorry, Councilman Herring, if I 
interrupted. Mm. My button isn't okay. working, Council President, when I've tried to raise my hand, so I apologize. If it seems like I'm not going by council protocol, um, council meeting protocol. I think when Mr. Himmler stated the figure went up a little bit, um, did we add an extra cushion to that? I thought we did. No? Yeah, we did. So we have okay. so that's 47 $47,000 left for that. Um, Mr. Hamler, did you want to add to that? But it doesn't, this is as of the applications in hand as mm -hmm. of today. So this doesn't include new people coming in to the, to the queue. Okay. Okay. And what's the, what's the max on those? 4,000. 4,000. Oh, so if there's a couple more, you could raise it to 80. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Himmler, and thank you, Ms. Councilman Heron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so did the security and camera doors. I think that's relatively easy to go into contract with. I the the, I'm sorry. I thought the um, police department was working on that. Make you know getting that. But, but, uh, Mr. Lieutenant Robinson has already produced three proposals. Uh, they would just need to be in the budget. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. They have to go out to RFP because they're over six thousand dollars, and that's going to take about anywhere from three months about three months for the whole process to go through. So, I'm not sure if you will be able to do it by December. 31st. And that's for, um, yeah, for the cameras and the doors. And that would that more than likely be two different companies. I'm sorry, say, if it, what would be two different companies? Yeah, you're not going to get somebody to do the doors. and We had to get separate companies to do the doors and cameras. Independent, I mean, because I think, uh, Mr. Simpson, don't we have a different company to do the locks on the doors versus the cameras? Yes, we did. We did new locks on the doors because the the locks were uh, relatively. They they're, they're the same company um, that provides or manufactures the locks. We had to find a different vendor to be able to service them, and we found out that those locks were outdated and need to be updated. Uh, and so we just had them updated. But they don't do cameras. They do not do that. They say locks. Okay, that's a separate company. You're right. Okay, that's why I say it's two separate companies. Yes. Yeah. Has anyone looked at the uh, uh, council president? Has Mr. Simpson looked at the proposals that uh, the three different uh, vendors that uh, Detective Robinson got to find out whether if they're offering both the doors and the cameras? So, so we are, and we have. Uh, I do believe the RFP process is definitely something that will will just be the hold up there. However. Um, one of them may have a contract that we can piggyback on. I'm waiting to get some feedback on that. Um, but to answer your question, yes. And I believe uh, I, I can confirm that with you once I uh, be able to tell you which which particular company did what. Uh, but I have looked at it. I, I couldn't tell you specifically which company does what. And if we piggyback off that contract there, then we don't need to do the RFP project. Uh, RFP, correct? Correct. If we're able to find a company uh, that has already gone through a procurement process that matches the cities, then we're able to uh, forego the RFP process and purchase, just as we do with the uh, vehicles, uh, New Holland Group, Apple Ford, uh, the roofing project, a couple of the other projects, some of the other purchases. I believe the police department was given information that they just had to get three bids. So if they had needed, if there was a need for them to go through the RFP process, um, that we need to make sure as a, as a city that that information is given to each department when they get ready to, uh, to do something. Make sure that that's clear. Okay, this one is going to need an RFP or this one we can get three bids because we have a contract that we can piggyback off of. Thank you, Council President. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Cafe. And, and had just recently explained by uh, Lieutenant Robinson, we've had a question within the last weeks when the, when that information was brought up. Thank you. Okay. Live scan machine. 
think the likelihood of us going into contract with that is what? If I may, uh, that's going to be the same situation. And just correct me if I'm wrong, anything that's over $6,000, if we are not able to piggyback uh, and find, uh, to piggyback on a contract that matches our procurement process, then we have to go through the RFP process. Okay, well, we don't blame. Uh, street paving, cap expenses for the contract. So this is for, um, Fifty thousand dollars, I believe. This was at the assessment, but the actual cost will be around four hundred and forty-three thousand dollars. Um, any comments on this one? And I believe. We were going to use reserves for this initially in the budget, but Count Vice President Ferguson. Uh, oh, I thought you had a question. No, I'm sorry. All right, Mr. Stewart. Um, yes, so Charles gave me um, two invoices for MZI totaling. Nine hundred and thirty-four thousand or nine hundred and thirty-five thousand um, dollars, and this is for paving and street repairs. Um, but remember, I was saying that we have um, highway user funds in reserves um, that can also add to this. We don't want to use all of it, as Mr. Herring was saying, um, but we have, based on the information that I have. Five hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars there, so we could, you know, share um, this cost between both um, grants. But how? What's the the timeline on that five hundred seventy-two thousand uh, dollars? It it is open. I I don't know how long because I saw that we have, um funds for highway user funds since I came here um, of like 350000 in the um, the investment fund. And it has stayed that way since, you know, so I don't know how long that has been there. So you're telling me that, it's, that who this was the federal government that gave us the money or the state? Okay. It's the state. It's state highway user fund. So you tell me the state gave us an indefinite amount of money that we can use. Um, every year, every year they give us because this year, 2023, 2024, they gave us um, 190, they say 195,000. And we were holding on to 376,000. So they just, they give us the funds so we put it out in, in our account. It's for repairs, streets, and um, other street-related um, expenses. But why would we not use it for streets? Why we why would we try to save it if we're going to get more money later? Why would we just tackle these streets with all the money? Um, it, it's only five seventy-one thousand. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to cover everything, but it can yeah, take out a pretty big chunk of what the total cost oh, is. Yes, it would. Okay. So, but we have a... All right, so what are we doing with this? Are we keeping it at the fifty thousand dollars? All right, we'll keep it at the fifty thousand dollars. Street and sidewalk repair, cost assessment. 
We're going to keep it at the $50,000. Um, Mr. President, wasn't that done? Didn't CPJ give us that analysis? Mr. Stewart? I mean, Mr. Simpson, I mean? Uh, yes, they did, and uh, we do have their invoices. Uh, I believe they're being processed. So uh, as they're being processed, we can give you, I guess, the final number. I don't know if that is inclusive of uh, all of their services. Um, I don't know. Well, this, you can chime in. For this particular one, I think so. When I read the contract, the total contract was for $8,060, correct? Okay, so then, then it has been fulfilled, and that part has been done. All right. Um, storm water runoff projects, engineering services, war one mm -hmm. issues. Um, that's the one that I had brought forth, um, along with other council members. Um, and for some reason, it, it's not being moved. It needs to be moved. Um, like I said, the issues that we have along Fisk Avenue, Delwood, some other spots in, uh, the city in general, where there's, there's an issue with water runoff, we needed the engineering, engineering services to look at that and see what basically what it is. You know, where is it coming from? You know, is it coming from like, and our issue here over here is, is the school. Is it coming off the school property? So they have to remediate. You know, um, on Delwood, is it coming off the business section up there? <laughs> so they will have to remediate. Um, and I think there's a couple other issues in, I think maybe wards two and three, two that they have with springs running underground. You know, how can we remediate that? So we just need to get them to look at it and see. And what's the likelihood of us being on, on the contract for that uh, so, the end of the year? Uh, I want to say very likely uh, with CPJA. Yes. Okay, so we just want to keep this at uh, $100,000. We have a contract for that, so that's already included. Manager, we are already oh, sorry, obligated. That's already obligated. Um, what's the likelihood of us? You know, I, I think that'd be it. I think you. I mean, because I'm the whole program is supposed to be like temporary speed bumps um, that we put throughout the city that can be moved. To just to see where we could use speed bumps and where we can get speed bumps put in the city permanently. Um, I'm not understanding why it hasn't moved yet. It's just a matter of purchase, purchasing them. So you probably can, I think that can be done by the end of the year, purchasing the speed bumps and the signs to say speed hump. Um, that's it. Then we just move them throughout the city when we have to. So I think yeah. that's like that being able to be done. I think you can. School uniforms. The likelihood of us being able to be under contract with <laughs> so, uh, Castle Castle Parade. Uh, yes. Yeah, that those um programs as per the application that was attached to the resolution, they have a, a, a window of, of application period so if they have not applied for it by the application period my recommendation would be whatever is left over goes back into the pot if the resolutions pass tomorrow i would recommend that the um application we need to send out a mailing um and if the application period start in mid-august and go through mid-september Tutoring services What's the likelihood Same thing. of us? Same thing. So, so my Same question thing, the is the application period. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sorry, go ahead. So but the application period is different from being obligated. Um, so it's my it's my understanding that this this um program will be for the entire school year, which will span all the way through what, June of next year? Yeah. So that's so, a question. For um to of clarification for Mr. Himmler because when they when they apply to the program they're telling us what the cost is for that entire school year. 
So we would know at that point how much we're going to be obligated for for any individual student. So I don't know if that is um, sufficient, Mr. Himmler, or if it has to be that we've we've paid it. I don't think that's the same thing. I, I don't know much about anything about this program. So this is going to be individuals applying or families applying for tutoring? Yeah. So a, a child, um, a parent will apply for a child. And they, when they submit their application, they will say to us, this is for a nine months of tutoring at um, ABC tutoring at a rate of $150 a month. So for the nine months, that is whatever half of 2700 is. Um, and that would be the amount that we would then, that I'm thinking we would say we're obligated for. And there adding all of that something up. Between the city and the, the parents or whatever, some kind of an agreement or something to be able to obligate it. Otherwise you're yeah, stuck. So Otherwise you're stuck for what they're just paying. But even then, what if a child moves out, you know, of the the district six months in and mm -hmm. then those funds will come back at play and then you have to do the you potentially could get um you have to then find costs that were already obligated to kind of substitute okay. them back out, you know. Okay. Yeah, Council well, Marie, I, basically we would have to we would have to obligate if if the max is three thousand, that means we would have to obligate eighty three plus people. Right, via via like agreement between the city and the parents or whatever saying this is what you agree to do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and that's what the application is. Right. So when they apply to us and they say this is the amount. So we're it's up to three thousand, but not everyone is gonna get three thousand, just like with the intergenerational, it's up to four thousand, but not everyone is getting four thousand. So we will I guess we how's will the know. program gonna work? Is it yes. re reimbursement? So, is it is it the the the, the tutoring services is going to bill the parents every month and then they show it to the city. I mean, how is this all going to work? So the city is going to pay the, um, pay the vendor, just like with the, the intergenerational, I think it's the intergenerational where we pay the vendor directly for the amount. So um, what I was going to say is we will know by the end of the application period, how much of that $250,000 is, under obligation um <clears throat> so if there's any remainder from that um that will go back into the pot you are right that there could be children who you know leave the leave the city during the school year and so those would be funds but those are would not be the the likely occurrence for the majority it just needs to figure out the processing of it. I mean, is it going to be monthly billings that the that the yes, right. yeah, yeah. So we wouldn't we wouldn't pay the entire school year up front. No, I got tutors, I got you. Yeah, so most tutors, you know, uh, have a like a monthly payment. And the city has staff to run that program. Yeah, so I've spoken with the the city manager and the um, treasurer around how that would be handled. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we just want to be able to look at the guidelines and the application, just to make sure everything's kosher before you launch. Yeah. Oh, so please have a look. The application was attached with the um, with the resolutions um, and the applications would be facilitated through a monday.com system to help manage it differently than how paper excuse me, submissions um, would typically be done. And, and will, Mr. Himmler, what would be the obligating factor? Would it be the application or would no, it be it's the agreement? It's the agreement. It's just like, it's like the, the home repair program. You know, there's no obligation until the city and the, the party, the homeowner executes a grant agreement that becomes an obligation. Simply applying doesn't mean anything. Simply sending a pre-approval notice doesn't mean anything. It's a the, there needs to be an agreement between the house, the home, the parents, and the city saying we're going to pay hundred dollars a month or week or whatever on behalf of Johnny, you know, to for for tutoring services. That's so what creates the obligation. 
So we have to have a contractual agreement with us. Yes. Because otherwise, then it's only going to be at the time and point of payment. If you don't have that, then it's just going to be at the up through December 31, whatever you paid out. This is a way to try to help you get the obligation is to have a formal agreement between the parent and the city. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So to answer your question, Council President, this would definitely be something that we would have by the end of the um, the end of the year and to my point around when the application period is like we wouldn't extend it out to be honest with you i don't think that i think we're going to have more applications than we're able to fulfill okay and and you're comfortable with let's say um a family starts the process and Let's say the the child doesn't show up for you know you know a couple months. So the the what I was going to charge the kid two hundred dollars a month for well he didn't show up for two of the weeks of it. So now it's only a hundred dollars for this month, and so now it's a hundred dollars back in the bank. Um, and let's say you do that with you know multiple people, we're okay with us possibly losing that money back to ARPA. Because uh, Mr. Hamlin, you correct me if I'm wrong, that will happen in in that scenario, or am I wrong? Well, what we'd have to do is just say, for example, you know, $50,000 kind of quote comes back, right? That doesn't get spent or it was obligated. The city will need to identify other obligated expenditures prior to December 31, 2024, that you could then charge it to. But it has to be cost obligated or incurred before December 31. Okay. So if you have if you had room of salaries, in theory, you, you could try to fix that problem because it's essentially a contract that comes in under, but you but you're going to be bound by had to be uh, obligated and incurred before December 31. 2024. And I, we'll, we'll look at the guidelines and we'll give you our two cents. I, if it's 80 some people, I'm a little nervous of that just be given the, the responses we've seen through other programs. And if it's, especially if it's income based, you know, uh, the 80 may be optimistic. No, it's, it's not income based. And we think for that reason, um, there will be, you know, a lot of applicants and there's like um, a lot of kids in the city as well. So if I make $500,000 a year, I can get assistance for tutoring for my child? Um, yeah. We did not make this um, in income restricted because okay. it's about the it's about the children um, and in helping to improve their grades. Um, so I think that, you know, I don't know that we'll be at risk, but again, I think we can assess that after the application period is done, because if we haven't used it, then it's money back into the pot. So, um, Council President, may I? Yes, Council so just, just because I don't have the resolutions in front of me right now, do we know when the application period ends for this particular resolution? Yeah, so... Um, we will, if this resolution passes tomorrow, the plan is to send out a mailing to the city so that everyone can be made aware of that, as well as the tutoring program in a single mailing with the application period starting in uh, mid-August and going through mid-September. Okay. And, and, and so, what we, so what we're saying is by mid-September after the, the application period, we will see whatever is left and based on whatever is left, we're going to put it in the pot. Is that what we're saying? I just want to be clear. Yes. I, I don't want to give any money back to the federal government. So I'm yes. I'm extremely concerned about 80. Okay, got it. And and Mr. Himmler, um, there aren't any income restrictions on this ARPA funds, right? I mean, typically they're they're tailored that way, but since this is revenue loss and you have discretion, but yeah, I'm a little surprised, but you, there's no specific prohibition. I mean, but generally they have encouraged people to run these programs to target low and moderate income, but. Okay. All right. I'm assuming the uniform ones a similar application process to parents or whatever. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll just put the 250 here. Well, we already have it, but. Uh, that's already done, that's already done, that's already done. And then you have the revenue loss. Um, uh, are there any other projects that we're going to have contracts for that will have obligations? Mr. Stewart. Okay, so I was looking at the police car and the fact that the computers, I think they're working on them now. So that 83,000, I think I had there, 86,332. Um, I believe that should go there to complete what we had. What are you talking about? So for the police vehicles, mm -hmm. we had um, $86,000 remaining. For 2025? Yes. 86 what? It's six three thirty two. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. Well, so oh. This is still uh, piggyback off that. All right, so all we're going to do here, I think I'm going to begin. All right, I'll revise the schedule and then come back to you guys. Um, we still have unallocated revenue that we have to account for. Now, we still have to create the process by which we, you know, I don't know. Uh, Councilman Farid, are, are, you, oh, are you going to um, share the... Um, Application process with, so we're saying that Mr. Hamlet's going to take a look at the application process and have this turned around to us by mid August. Is that what we're saying, Councilman Farid? Have, have what turned around? The application process. So we asking Mr. Hamler to. I wasn't asking Mr. Himmler anything. I think he asked to see the application and I said that it's a, it's attached to the resolution. Okay. So he's so he just going to look at it. Well, I don't, well, I don't know. We'll I don't know what Mr. Himmler wanted to get. Uh -huh. Yeah. We'll review it and give any comments, suggestions to, to the city. Uh, we're more so just trying to make sure, um, just trying to understand the, the flow. That's the, 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 how it's going to, the, the, Slow, but also that that you know there needs to be an agreement between the parties. So yes. that that's the extent of it. We'll try to review that this week, and if not, give comments back this week by early next week at the latest. Um, yeah, um, I think now that we've gotten to the place where we've done all the resolutions, it would be. Good for 
Um, I, I haven't heard anyone. I know other people have ideas, but I've heard a lot around what Mr. Uh, Herring has been raising and things that are needed um, so that we can figure out which of those things are, are, you know, like grant situations where we can get the funds apply for an in a year versus maybe some of the capital things where it would make sense to move the money over um, to allow time to do RFPs and that type of thing. If we wanted to do that, or I don't know what what else we wanted to do, but just keeping in mind it needs to go in the budget or should go in the budget. It's over to the council. Uh, Mr. Himmler? It's a suggestion for consideration since. You know, you obviously made adjustments, increases in the budget, the total budget now from the exercise you just did because the gold room was not in the original budget, so it's 200K. The council chamber went up 200K, so you're, you've are you added 500. So I think you need to figure out what's kind of un unallocated even from a budget standpoint before you start talking new programs because that'll dictate the conversation to some extent. Okay. Because there's no point talking about twenty, you know, five, ten, twenty projects if you only got five hundred thousand or whatever the net number is based on those adjustments in the overall budget that just happened. Just one second. And then the other adjustment, I think, in the budget was the one that Dean just added or talked about was the police. The 83,000, you're going to need to increase the budget for by that amount. So it's, you've added 580 some thousand at least. It's not in your green column, Mr. Curtis. Yeah. Council President, we've taken away 200,000 as well from the stormwater rebate program. That's why it may be productive to like update this and then come back and, and, you know, talk about it again. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other comments or questions on offer funds? All right. Well, hearing none, we will move on. All right. Uh, any final comments on the 2025 budget? I think this has a direct effect on the budget. Correct. Councilman Jones. Thank you, Council President. Are we were we gonna raise um salaries for um raise the um Salary budget for uh, employees with offer funds, or we're just going to go through what we just went through. We're going to figure out where that's going to take us, and then from there we'll uh, deal with uh, salaries. Salaries are separate. I think salary increases are already in the budget. Um, I think we had a line item in the past where we gave out uh, bonuses, um, and Christmas bonuses last year. I think that came out of offer funds. Oh no, no, no. I think we allocated um, a bonus pool to opera funds, and then we paid out, you know, like small uh, bonuses until we can have the the um, salary classification done, and then we paid out of the ARPA the salary increases. I think it was in twenty twenty three. I'm not sure, but, okay. um, but what I'm saying is uh, 
But this year we gave a three three point uh, three percent raise, which is not a raise. That's the COLA cost of living adjustment that the government, the federal government, requires us to give employees. Uh, we weren't going to do anything additional above that. Maybe another two percent, I think, um, for the employees. Uh, you know, it's certainly an option. Any discussion on that? Ms. President. Uh, um, uh, sorry, Ms. Harry, you're moving around, so I can't I when you uh, uh, unmute yourself. So, but Ms. Yes, sir, Ms. Harry. Oh, um, no, I mean, we shouldn't be using op, uh, grant money for salaries. Um, we got that's a continue. We need a continual revenue stream to pay salaries. Something that's going to come in every year. I mean, once that money is gone, it's gone. And we're going to take the salaries down. No, you got to maintain those salaries. Um, I don't see where we would take salaries up with grant money if, if you're going to end up getting yourself in a hole. And, and our tax rate went down too. I can't see that. That isn't logical. I mean, I, we, we've given a 3.5, and it isn't required by the federal government. We don't have to give them anything if we don't want to. The city out of the kindness of his heart is giving him a 3.5 cost of living adjustment. Um, merit is something completely different. Um, that's the only other increase you should be getting. Um, again, we, and we also went through this whole process with the salary scale. That's how we got out of whack before because we didn't have a salary scale. Now we got a salary square, scale. We need to adhere to it when it comes to giving any type of increase. All right, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm going to assume and Councilwoman John, she can correct me, or maybe I'm wrong, that the, what you're referring to is a one-time, like the la like a 2023, a one-time bonus, or are you talking about a salary increase? I'm not talking about a bonus. I'm talking, I, maybe we could get the, the treasurer to speak on this also, that, you know, the city has enough money, uh, enough uh, funds where they could give a better uh Increased and I think it was three percent for the it was a cola three percent and not three point five. Uh, correct yeah. me, uh, can Mr. Schoolick correct me if I'm wrong? Yes. Yeah, so the salary increases is three percent, but the scale itself would provide five percent. So if we're going to put everyone back on the scale, it will be five percent. Okay, so. Ms. Aaron it is correct in that, I mean, I don't think the opera funds should be used to increase salaries because it's something we have to, in my opinion, and I agree with Mr. Heron, it's, some, it's something we have to sustain um, over a period of time. That That's a budgetary item that we'll, I guess, need to discuss. Okay, so we wouldn't need to have to use opera funds, but we do have the funds where we could go uh, as the treasurer's indicated up to five percent instead of three percent. And treasurer, still we have enough money for five percent. Um, I the only way we'll have more is if we do that. Um, as you say, nuclear. Um, pay off some of the expenses, but right now, um, based on what the budget is saying, uh, we wouldn't have enough for um, that kind of increase. Okay. Thank you. How, however, however, um, it being paid as a bonus coming from ARPA should be okay if Mr. Hebler would um, confirm that. And it would be a one-time payment, but, you know, just a bonus. Thank you. Mr. Hammer, is that correct? Yeah. I mean, this city can use, I mean, is this a bonus, not premium pay or, or that kind of stuff? I mean, you, in theory, you can. Um, but again, it's going to have to be spent before. Um, between now and December 31. Okay. Thank you. Council McGill. Thank you, Council President. I was asking, actually, my question is actually based on something else, right? As when you ended um, ARPA going into 2025. The question that I have is if we're going to, whether we go nuclear or whatever, the second to 
less nuclear option is, would that require, wouldn't that require us to actually create a section or something in our 2025 budget mm -hmm. where we can identify the surplus and allocate whatever programs we want to have based on the whatever um, perceivable surplus would be? You're talking about a separate session. Section, right? section, section. So if we were to go, like, again, let's say we were to go the nuclear route or semi-nuclear route or whatever. Let's say we take personnel, right? Mm -hmm. For example, we take personnel out um, and we allocate 100% of it to, again, this is scenario. This is not me saying to do this. We allocate it to um, ARPA. Right. So whatever the surplus now that would be seen in our budget, because personnel is no longer an expense. We still want to have programs throughout the year that we want to throw or, or grant things that we want to start for the citizens or the city as a whole. Can't we are we not to have is there a section that we can identify where we can pull that money from? Section that we can identify. Like, can we create a section or is there a section? I guess this is for you and, and maybe D. Well, yep, you just phrased it. <laughs> Mr. Stewart? And, and yes, that would require me opening another, um, what is, say, cost center and special revenue to track those as we go along, just to make sure that we stick to what we plan to do now in the revenue, um, in the reserves area. Correct. Would that is that is that an arduous task, um, Treasurer Stewart, Mr. Stewart? Uh, um, it's not too arduous, but it will take me like maybe a day or two to really get it settled. Okay, and the reason why I'm saying that is I want to also be realistic as to when we're going to meet again. I don't want us to rush to have meetings. Um. I'd rather us know what we're meeting about. So if we're going to meet tomorrow about something, I want to meet about that without, you know, meeting to get some new numbers and it might not have the attention that it needs applied to it. Okay. So you, oh, I was just you. picking that up. All right. So what I'm hearing now is that in my estimation we're not in position to pass a budget um it'll take some time go ahead council Guillaume. yeah no and for me i'm not even saying that i'm just more so saying you know how when you came in you're like okay so there's nothing to this there's nothing that needs to be done about 2025 budget right and that's when i believe councilwoman jones asked her question so for me, the, when I had put my hand up, it was more so because I'm not concerned about the numbers of 2025 because I feel like those are becoming more and more solid. Those are solid, but it was yeah. more so about the section regarding the surplus, right? The, the perceived surplus, excuse me, if we were to go a certain route, you know, given the whole ARPA exercise that we just went through and people were saying that, okay, we could remove this out, put this here, put this into ARPA. Okay, after we finish putting it into ARPA and we then decide what allowable expenses can we allocate to ARPA? After that is done, that's going to appear as a surplus on our in our budget, right? And while it appears as a surplus in our budget, there are still programs that we want to do. We just don't want the confinement of 1231-2024, the obligation piece. So where would we pull from that? I didn't think it was going to be something that would be extra labor intensive, but... I just wanted to say like that's a task that, again, I'm just drawing diagrams so it doesn't seem like it's extensive, but I'm not the one doing it. So that's why I asked. Uh, all right. Mr. Hamler? Thank you, sir. Just, just, a, just a thought on that. So, you know, that next step should not keep you from adopting a 25 budget because in essence, whenever you get to the step of doing the savings, you know, that's going to essentially create a budget surplus at some point in time in the year. Then at that point, if the city decides they want to spend that surplus, 
then at that point you you do what you normally do if you get excess money or whatever, uh, and then you take the appropriate action at that point in time. That's how most other people are doing it, typically in a budget process. So hearing what you're saying, Mr. Himmler, um, and thank you for that. So hearing what you're saying, we can still do our programs, but we would just allocate it to a certain line item, like whether it's from the from the reserve section or general. Like I just don't know what. Yeah, it's a matter of how you typically do it. In, in my old world, like if you had a excess funds, which essentially this is what it's doing, it's creating a savings. Mm -hmm. Once we get to the reallocation and you charge salaries and benefits or whatever, for example, this is say, let's make up a number because it's easier to follow. Let's say there's, it's a million dollars, right? That you decide yeah. in, in the next, in, you know, and in, in shortly, in a short period of time that you're going to charge a million dollars of salaries and benefits to, to ARPA. Well, that's going to create a million dollar savings in your budget, right? Mm -hmm. At some point in time, obviously post, you know, probably January 1, the city will, will then need to decide at some point, okay, that million dollars, we just created the savings. What do we want to do with that? Do we want to spend it on programs? So it's some of the stuff that Mr. Curtis had on there that you could still do. Is mm -hmm. it just other stuff that you want to do or is this drop to the bottom line? So at some point you'll have those discussions um and take whatever appropriate action you need to do legislatively to to deal to deal with that 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 adjustment some of our clients want to have that discussion up front other ones just like no nope, we'll deal with that later when we get to that point um just because they need to have the discussion like you guys are having in some cases yeah so hearing that um and i'm only one member out of seven but hearing that council president i do think it is doable to the budget um but i'll go with the will of the other six as well sorry thank you council Guillaume. um i have any other comments uh we're transitioning from aqua fund discussion to fy25 budget discussion of any final um issues with the budget that council members have before we um move to vote on the budget Stewart. Uh, i'm sorry uh council mayor no go ahead let mr stewart go i'm actually looking for something okay yes. mr stewart Yes. So on a quick review, I realized that the um the the council deputy clerk is not there. Okay. Well we'll add that. So we'll add that and make the necessary adjustments. Councilmember Harry? Yeah, I still have a problem with the salary increases. Um, again, I think it should go through proper protocol. I think that, um, I said this before, you know, um, we hire people based on what the salary is and budget, and that's what they take it. Person needs to get through their probationary period, get through their, a year worth at least of um, being on a job and evaluations before. Um, we talk about taking somebody's salary up, and I don't think that's being done correctly or fairly. And that's why we always have this run with employees because we do stuff like that, you know. And I don't think we should be doing that. So, uh, and I'm specifically talking about the code enforcement position is being jumped up six thousand dollars, almost almost six thousand dollars. I think that should have been, if it was going to be that way, it should have been negotiated when whatever person comes on, came on, on what they wanted. Not get in and then say, I'm going to take you out. You knew the experience coming on board, then that should have been conveyed to HR and everybody else that was involved with the hiring process to see what they could do with that and if they could take it out. But I don't think just unilaterally giving somebody something because they just came on board. I don't think it's fair to the other employees who had to wait all of these years just to get to where they are. So I think it needs to, cost living adjustment need to be included in that and that's it and move forward. And then if they want to look at something six months down the road after an evaluation or a, 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 a year after the road after evaluation, then that's when you should do, that's what they should do, and also follow whatever the process is 
based on our salary scale that we've adopted by ordinance. So that's a problem. I mean, I, I, I think we need to look at that. So, all right, thanks. Second by that. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move forward. Sorry, what was the question again? What did you? I'm sorry, is there a second? Mr. Councilman Herring does not agree with a particular salary in the budget. Uh, it relates to code enforcement. Um, I think his proposal is that it, I, I, I take it, go down, uh, um, that that position does not get the increase, basically. And so that was his proposal. If there's a, you know, someone who agrees to that proposal, if there are three other council members who agree with that proposal, then that will be taken out of the budget. If it's not, then it'll remain. So that's why I said, is there a second? Anybody, are there three other council members who feel the, the exact same way? Uh, Mr. President, just to be clear, I propose that the person get the cost of living adjustment like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. But further down the road, at the evaluation and everything, on a, 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 a salary increase. All right, All right thanks. Okay, so remember, here. All right, are there Councilman Jones? Oh, thank you for the clarification. I don't. I, I think that uh, the, if they hired the person with experience, I think that the experience should weigh in the in the uh, salary. Thank you. All right. If there's no other discussion. Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to know where do they fall on the scale for that position? That increase, where does it fall on the salary scale? Mr. Stewart uh, or uh, Mr. Simpson? I think this was requested as a promotion from one position to the next. But let me look at this, the scale and see what I can Yeah, the on. question is, where is it on the scale? It has to be in... I mean, if, if it's promotion, fine, but where is this individual on the scale? Because we have a salary uh, classification where the person has to be somewhere. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, you're just breaking up, Mr. Simpson. My apologies. As I said, I'm pulling up at P scale now. All right. Uh, is, there, is there anything else? Um, yeah, I'm just waiting to see where they fall on the salary scale, if it was even utilized or it's just somebody doing a number out there. And also, Mr. Mr. Stewart just said he think it's a, pro a promotion. Um, yes, that's what I was, that's what I was told. It's a promotion. Okay. Yes, I do believe that was something that was put in by the previous city manager. I'm just trying to confirm it's on the request of the uh, enforcement manager. Just give me a moment. And as we wait for Mr. Simpson, um, so just want to say that the preliminary findings will be that there's still $1.4 million um, that will be unobligated by December 31st. dollars $1,413,792 approximately. Just FYI. All right. Is 
Sharon, are you comfortable with getting that later in the email? Um, I have a problem with that because my thing is, if you're going to do something, it needs to be above board. I mean, if somebody's getting a promotion, then what are you basing that promotion on? Um, what evaluations have been done? See, I mean, I, I, it bothers me when we when we do these things, we don't have criteria set in place because every employee is entitled to that same type of um, access to being promoted or whatever, based on whatever method they're using here to promote a person. And I'm not seeing that being done fairly and equitably be across the board. This should be something in place to uh, justify this. We always talk about justifying the budget, justifying the budget, but then I guess it seems like that certain people can get justified easier than others. I mean, like I said, like I told you before, I don't think the position in uh, 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 police is needed. That's need to be eliminated and spread up salary amongst the, the police officers. Take them up closer to sixty thousand dollars, like most officers get, you know. But obviously, that wasn't accepted. But I think that's something that should be done, and I can justify it based on what incoming officers are getting. And the fact that that position is losing money and that service that it's providing is being done by a number of places throughout the, throughout the county. Splash scan now is being done at FedEx, UPS stores, uh, municipal governments. So, you know, I just don't understand the logic and how we do these and how we, how we uh, appreciate our employees and how we give them things. I guess it all depends on who you know and who you like. But, uh, if, I, if I recall... It, 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 if I recall that um, it was the person's experience and the additional duties that a person does warranted the the increase. Um, but I understand your argument, Mr. Heron, Council Member Heron, sorry. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing in writing to justify that. Yeah, uh, and the only thing, Council Member Heron, like, so I, like I said, I hear you, but you need three other council members to... I understand that. I just, I just want people to see how going on how we do things when it comes down to our employees. Now, I want to see how many people are going to be, like, I didn't want to support, like I say, taking up the officers. The officers out there every day in these streets. Now, I know an officer that started, she started making 60000 I just wanted to get them closer. But unfortunately, you know, some people get privileged positions and, you know, positions that shouldn't be there, they can be used to take those up. And be and move that money somewhere where it can really be used, and now being wasted on something that we don't even really need. So, all right, and, thanks. And Councilman, I agree that officers should be paid more. Uh, I just disagree with the method of eliminating a, a position to accomplish that. Vice well, President, well, position person. that's not making money. If a position is not benefiting the community, position that's really not needed. And a service that we are losing money on, which has been proven over and over and over in the budget, that we're losing money on fingerprinting, why well, maintain that position? That money can go to something more useful. So, I mean, maybe I look at it differently because I just look at what will benefit the citizens versus what benefits individuals. All right, thanks. Vice President Ferguson? Yeah, um, I did have some questions concerning the, uh, the employee um, as it pertains to the... Um, Promotion, but before I go there, I'm not. Uh, uh, I do not agree with abolishing anyone's job. I mean, if we need to add on, add on, but just you know, kicking off somebody's job, um, abolishing that, I'm not for that. So my question is, um, again, how long have this employee been uh, employed, and have they had their midterm or their annual um, uh, review? Okay, uh, yeah, well, first thing, no, that not appear that that particular salary is on the scale. It was list her current, uh, I'm sorry, the current salary that's listed is a 12, four, grade 12, step four. Uh, the grade 12, step five is a little higher than what I believe is proposed in the budget. So I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the reasoning or the thought process behind that originally being there other than what was mentioned. Um, I think it definitely would need to be reevaluated to be placed on the scale, if you will. However, that difference uh, with the increase is about $300 uh, if we were to do it on the scale uh, of a step, uh, grade 12, step 5. 
uh, it would be about $300 less. So what's being proposed is 55,405. On the scale, it is showing the next step, 55,137. Okay. Vice President, does that answer your question? No, I said, how long has she, uh, how long has that person oh, uh, been? Can you hold one moment, I'll get that confirmed. Have they been, had their midterm, has it been longer than six months? I'll get that confirmed. I believe so, but let me confirm the exact hire date. And then the other thing uh, issue I have is that um, I do understand what they were saying. What has been said that uh, the, uh, the qualifications and the experience. Then I mean I know I'm I, I have been in management and hired. I mean sometimes people, depending on their experience and qualifications, they are sometimes hired at a hired at a higher asking of uh, salary, they may negotiate a salary. I'm not understanding why it wasn't negotiated then, because I do um, have a um, concern about, you know, you do, you know, somebody just coming in, you know, having been a year or or, or whatever, and they just get a, a, a um, promotion on the qualifications when they came in. They came in with a qualification. I would, I would respect it more to have offered them that then well they come in with this qualification so you know we we're gonna you know boost this up so um I, that concerns me as well Simpson, did you have an answer mr simpson oh, are you still looking sorry i can you repeat that no the the, the question was how long has this person been uh february 2024 was her start date i'm sorry the start date uh, they have not done their midterm. I believe their midterm uh, is soon to be done. Okay. Well, well, my uh, personally, for me, I, I just I, it doesn't register right with me for to give somebody a six thousand dollar promotion or promotion at all, and they haven't even had their midterm review. I, it is I, not a six thousand dollar too. I just want to make sure we clear on that because I know we're saying six thousand. Uh, the increase is about two thousand, I think, or maybe just under just under thirty or thirty three. Mm -hmm. Well, anything, yeah. Well, I, again, they haven't even had a midterm review, and you're offering uh, a promotion. I can see if you were saying well, midterm, you've got done this, and you've got all fives, or you're standing, and we're gonna give you. A, you're talking about a, a promotion, and they haven't even been rated halfway through. So for me. Yeah, I, I don't, and I have a problem with it. I mean, not a major problem, but I, you know, as a, that's not the way I would do things. Because if I was going to do it, I would have hired them for the experience and gave them that salary coming in. Thank you. Councilman Hairston. I just wanted to second it. All right. Thank you. Councilman McGill. I just want to third what council actually, uh, actually you're vice, fourth. yeah <laughs> what she said and and what councilman herring brought up so i but council vice president said it all okay so the 3300 dollar increase should be removed that's four mr stewart um, mr president yes, i got it uh, Mr. President, I ask for clarification here because in the budget it says fifty-eight hundred. Mr. Stewart, is it fifty-eight or thirty-three? I am. I'm actually looking at her current salary right now to see what it is because I think there may be an error here. She should only get the cola. She's. Well, when I look at what I have as a calculation here, it's a 3%. But the 3% is coming from 53,000 or 53,791. So that may be an error. Because I see here, step, this is grade 12, step four is a 53,792. So I think that's what she's getting us pay right now. So the increase is a difference. 
Let me see. Is one thousand six fourteen. So that's an error. So it would that, just be the code. That, that forty nine thousand. That's an error. So it would only be the 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 caller. What was Pearson, What is this? What was the sign we advertised that? So what was the starting salary? And whatever and will, y'all, you need to answer. Whatever the starting salary was, the three percent. The three percent on that is what this position should be getting. Councilman Herring, is that correct? Yes. All right. So if you do those revisions, Mr. Stewart. Yes. Um, the plan is to vote on the budget tomorrow. Yes. And and legislation tomorrow. Hey, uh, Council. Yes, Councilwoman Jones. Um, the um, code enforcement director was on here, Mr. Green. James, maybe he wanted to add something to the, the conversation. I don't know if you would allow that. I, I would allow it. Go ahead, Council I mean, Mr. Green. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, this particular code enforcement officer that we are referring to uh, has had an evaluation, uh, did exemplary on uh, her evaluation, and to confirm that her salary is not um, uh, at, at 49, uh, so that is an error. It's actually, if I stand corrected, it's 53. Uh, so I just wanted to point those two things out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's correct. Sorry to, to break you, but I just checked the salaries and it is 53,791. So the increase is only um, 1,640. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll go to Councilman Guillaume before I make my comment. Councilman Guillaume? Right. I'm not going to touch on the number because now that's another conversation. Um, I just wanted to ask Mr. Green if um, since Mr. Since acting manager, acting city manager Simpson said she the the employee started in February. And they had an evaluation. What was the term of their evaluation? Was it like a three month evaluation? Was it a you know, I, I'm I'm just curious. Yes, thank you for the question, Councilwoman. Um, it was it's more like a, a four to five month evaluation. March, April, May, June. Uh, we four months. We did it in June. Uh, we received the uh, email from HR saying that all employee evaluations have to be done by a certain date. So hers was completed within that time frame as requested. Okay, thank you. That was it. My now concern, sir. Uh, I'm trying to find it. So, what what will be the new salary on this with the three percent? I mean, I can calculate it real quick if you guys can. All right, Council President. Yeah. If we are going with just a step increase, <laughs> excuse me, uh, the new salary would be 55137. All right, so that's the 53, whatever, times, uh, times 1.03. Yeah, it's either 55, I think it's a step, I'm sorry, I may have that back, maybe 55943 um, uh, as you go up one grade. I just need to confirm that. All right. Could you tell me, as you look at that, can you tell me how much a police officer makes? Yep. I don't have, I thought I had it, but I don't have that in front of me. Do you have that in front of you? I'm going to it right now. Hold on. 
I do have what the what's stated in the budget. That's why uh, officers look like they're in that fifty-four nine seven on the low end, uh, and the higher end. Uh, private. Uh, no. Go ahead. Yeah, we're looking at sixty sixty-five on the highest private. Well, that's not that's not a, a, let, a let, police officer. That's not it. Uh, so the police officers, the least they're getting is fifty-five one sixty-five. Well, well, what did he say? Fifty-four. That's the actual FY twenty uh, fifty-four. Twenty-four. I'm sorry. Okay. Who's iPhone six? Dean, is that you? Uh, no, no. All right, so whoever's iPhone 6, please stop opening up your mic or you will be removed from the meeting. So I'm going to mute you again. If you unmute yourself, then I'm going to remove you from the meeting. All right. Um, so, and that's the concern I have is that is no way, in my opinion, and and that's not to um, to throw shade at the code enforcement salary. Um, it's more so to highlight that the difference. I'm tasked with coming to risk my life to protect the city, uh, the citizens of Glenarden, um, and someone who's not doing the, the same thing as me, putting their life on line is making possibly more than me or equivalent to me. And, and that's to me a problem. So I think we ought to seriously look at what in the world went wrong here. Um, and how do we, um, you know, uh, we're not devaluing the position because I think code enforcement is actually is needed and it, it requires professional, uh, professionally experienced individuals. Um, however, I do separate that from people who come day in and day out and deal with, you know, um, higher intensity and higher challenging and more dangerous situations that we don't pay them i think what they deserve so i i just want to say that to the council that i know we have a budget to keep and um and that's fine my and then and it's 1.4 million dollars my i'll just make it known that part of my um suggestion would be that we at least give officers, a, a, if we can't sustain it over time, with some ARPA funds, give them a bonus for, for what they do for the city of Glenarden. So that's to come later on, but I just think that, that this particular situation highlights the, the disparity in what police officers should receive and what others are receiving. Mr. President, All I right. follow up. On that, right quick. Just, but this is a clear example of what I was talking about when we don't follow the pay scale, because the pay scale that we paid all that money for says that an incoming code enforcement officer should be making forty nine nine five one. That's the new incoming uh, range for a new um, new officer coming in, and um, then they would go from their salaries and steps, and that's why we need to follow what we put in place. <laughs> Um, that's why we had this disparity in salaries. I mean, uh, an incoming police officer, we say, should start at, um, what's that, the new, well, actually, the same as I think, 49951, based on the salary scale that we paid for. So, you know, um, we got to adhere to that because it isn't fair to these officers when, um, and to, to other employees. When they're not adhering to these things and people coming in with these high salaries and getting uh, increased uh, salaries over over and above what they should be getting as a new employee starting uh, in the city of Glenarden based on the salary scale that we had. So that's why we where we are now. And that's how you get to these disparaging salaries when the salary where code enforcement versus police 
Um, we really need to stop that, and we need to stick to stick to what we do and pay attention to what's going on. And that's another issue in and of itself. But all right, thanks. Okay, and I think the final piece is Mr. Simpson uh, proposed uh, temporary. Um, oh, what's the name of that, Mr. Simpson? Temporary. Uh, skin late. All right, temporary promotion. Temporary promotions. Thank you. Are there any objections to what Mr. Simpson has proposed? Uh, yes. I think that, one, I've never heard of a temporary promotion. I, I don't agree with a temporary promotion. Again, if we're going to take salaries up on a limited time, I think you should do it based on a bonus. I think money should be put in the budget for a bonus for these employees instead of putting it into payroll. Because when the, temp, when it, when the promotion period is over, you're going to roll the salaries back. See, and I don't think it's right to do that. I, and one, and also that's a roundabout way of locking somebody into a salary that they, that you want to give them a bit, another salary increase. I think if you want to do it, if you feel they're doing an excellent job, or they're going above and beyond uh, their normal job duties, and they, you know, um, then you should put give them a bonus. You know, we got bonus money in the budget already. Just increase that that pot. I think that's the best thing to do. Now, I do think, I, I'm going to tell you honestly, I do think that we need to look at the salary for the um, web designer, webmaster, um, mm -hmm. media person. I think she's been given a lot of extra duties that she did not expect to have when she came on board. Um, I think we need to look at that salary closely on a salary scale and see what we can do for that one. Because, the, again, I mean, she came in as a media specialist. Now she's on everything that and that and some and some more, you know. Um, but the other ones, I think that they should be bonuses. I don't think there should be there should be no temporary uh which I never heard of a, a temporary promotion. I, I think that's a roundabout way of giving somebody a salary increase, knowing that you're gonna have trouble rolling it back. Um I think that's the way we should go. That way we're not locked into a, a, a salary. I mean, the council needs to remember that our tax rate did roll back. We've gone down to 0.33. Now, if the if the housing market bubble bursts, we're going to be losing a lot of money, which happened in 2008. And we the only reason we were able to survive that and didn't have to let nobody off is because we were able to we had reserves enough to maintain the city as is for having to let nobody off. And I think we need to look at that and make sure that we continue to keep a, a hefty reserve because you never know what the economy is going to do. So, so yeah, I don't agree with it sure. with those with three up. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Harry. Councilman Jones. Uh, thank you, Council President. I think only uh, I don't think that uh, the uh, media specialist position was uh, temporary was made temporary. I think that was a no. That'll be that was, that was permanent. And I, but I think that's what Councilman Harry is talking about. I'm sorry. I said no. You're correct. That 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 particular one was permanent. The other right. three were temporary. I, I think the other. Now that there, um, only two of them were uh, uh, per, uh, temporary, if I'm not mistaken. Let me pull that email up. Mr. Simpson, you can speak on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there were three of them that were temporary, uh, just re relative to the shifts uh, with me taking on acting city managers. Uh, and the thought process uh, was when that change happens uh, back, uh, or whatever the case may be, then of course all those things get changed just in, relative to also what's happening with that position. Uh, but the media specialist, a, a communications manager title uh, or, or the person uh, that we are dubbing to take over that department, uh, that wasn't a temporary promotion. That was a permanent suggestion. Um, uh, and so, Mr. Simpson, can you between you and Mr. Stewart, can you guys calculate? I mean, I, I agree, with Mr. Heron, it's probably making more sense since we have opera funding. Uh, can you just calculate the time period for which the um, the temporary is most supposed to take place? The difference between the regular pay and the temporary pay, and then just do a bonus based on that amount. Uh, I believe so, Mr. Stewart. Sure, we could do that. Okay. Um, and Mr. Simpson, I know only because we were working on Sunday, um, we talked about the web designers. Um, 
Was it Sunday? I don't know. <laughs> we talked about the web designer um, and we talked about uh, a particular grade that you were looking at. What grade is that? Uh, hold on a moment, please. Let me pull it up. Um, it, as he pulled the set up as, and we're about to close out, uh, all council members, anybody who will not be able to make the meeting tomorrow at 630. Okay. And for citizens who are watching, uh, we will have another special regular meeting tomorrow at 630 to pass legislation and, um, the budget. And those items will be posted soon. Uh, Vice President Ferguson? No, we will not be having a meeting on Wednesday. Nope, we're just going to... Thank you. Move it to Tuesday. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I believe, as Mr. Simpson is looking for it, I believe the, the salary for that position in that step was around $68,000. Um, yes, it was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it was a grade seven, uh, step 13. What's that amount? Sixty-eight nine seven seven. All right. Anybody object to that? Here now, Mr. Stewart, if you can update the budget to reflect that for the web designer, that'd be great. Any final comments from council members? Vice President Ferguson. Oh, no. Okay. We're hearing none. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. The time is 9.19. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Good night.